This happened. NASA just canceled Sierra Space's Dream Chaser after a series of recent Boeing Starliner troubles on the ISS. This means Dream Chaser officially dropped from the second launch of ULA's Vulcan Centaur rocket. This alarms one more delay on the space plane. But is it the agonizing fall? Are there any other chances for Dream Chaser? What risks and opportunities does this change bring for both Sierra Space and ULA? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. After being imposed financial penalties by the U.S. Air Force in May, United Launch Alliance admitted that it should not hold the Vulcan Centaur rocket on the ground any further. The payload of the second Vulcan Centaur mission will be changed from Sierra Space's Dream Chaser to an inert payload and instrumentation. Thanks to that, the Vulcan flight's launch date is now being scheduled for September, one month earlier than the previous ULA plan. In May, the firm raised confidence it would launch the space plane by October, but Sierra then announced that that schedule is risky for Dream. Sierra Space has shared that they are making excellent progress with Dream Chaser, but have scheduled risk to fly by that time. ULA tweeted. Additionally, ULA's other big customer, Amazon's Project Kuiper Broadband Constellation, also won't be ready to launch its first batch of operational satellites on a Vulcan rocket this fall. Because no other payloads could be ready for the September launch, a simulator is compulsory. For Sierra Space, the move relieves scheduled pressure to some degree and allows them time to focus on ensuring that no stones are left unturned in the lead-up to Dream Chaser's maiden spaceflight. Given that the Tenacity spacecraft that will fly the mission is also planned to be reused, it's critical for Sierra to have a successful launch and landing of the spacecraft. According to the latest updates on Dream Chaser's progress, the space plane has been undergoing final testing and pre-launch processing at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, ahead of its launch scheduled for later this year. The remaining pre-flight activities at Kennedy include acoustic and electromagnetic interference and compatibility testing, completion of work on the space plane's thermal protection system, and final payload integration. The Dream Chaser space plane, named Tenacity, arrived at Kennedy on May 18th from NASA's Neil Armstrong Test Facility in Sandusky, Ohio, and joined its companion Shooting Star Cargo Module, which arrived on May 11th. Before arriving at Kennedy, the space plane and its cargo module underwent vibration testing inside the agency's Space Environments Complex, exposing the stack to vibrations like those it will experience during launch and re-entry to the Earth's atmosphere. Following vibration testing, the duo moved to NASA's in-space propulsion facility and was exposed to low ambient pressures and temperatures, ranging from minus 150 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. As expected, Tenacity can launch at the end of 2024, but due to ULA obligations and only three Vulcan rockets are expected to be complete before the end of the year, it will likely need to slip to 2025. The part of ULA also confirmed that they will not leapfrog their customer, we are working with Sierra Space to identify the next available launch date. The long delay of Dream Chaser could somewhat threaten NASA's plans in the Commercial Resupply Service 2 program where the vehicle was selected, along with Space Dragon 2, in 2016. The company had anticipated to begin fulfilling cargo resupply missions to the ISS for NASA in late 2019, but the bad delay then slipped its first demonstration mission to 2024. If Tenacity continues to extend its postponement, NASA will likely come up with the redundancy. So, how about you? Will Dream Chaser be able to launch in early 2025? Please drop the heart icon in the comments section if you agree. Anyway, if you find this useful, please give us a share, like, and subscribe. Your support will be a huge motivation for us to release more high-quality content in the future. And now, let's come back. On the other hand, the move makes a lot of sense for Sierra's partner. ULA needs to ramp up its progress toward Vulcan's CERT-2, the second of two launches needed for the Space Force to certify the rocket for launching national security payloads. So it's not wild if Tori decides to skip his customer and launch the rocket in time, even though this means the CERT-2 launch will not be a revenue-earning mission. This is certification at our own expense, Bruno said. At first glance, it is like sending a $100 million Vulcan empty rocket into orbit with nobody paying for it. 
clearly it's a loss for a company meeting financial trouble. However, as we go more in depth, it turns out to be a long-term investment because CERT 2 does have a much richer customer, the Pentagon. We'll make this investment so that we're able to support our national security space missions. He said, it is devoid of any government funding. It's in the high tens of millions. It's real money. But the actual dollar value is proprietary. As you know, national security missions are the most lucrative launch contracts to the tune of billions of dollars a year in rocket orders. Some of them are low-cost experimental missions, but the majority are expensive, top-secret satellites the Pentagon isn't willing to let just anyone fly. Government satellites often require special handling, resulting in extra fees in some terms like engineering insight, unique cleanliness specifications, and in some cases schedule priority over other commercial missions. Not by chance, SpaceX has still not yet canceled Falcon Heavy despite its low demand in the market. They are using their workhorse vehicle to compete with ULA's rockets for the National Security Space Launch NSSL, program. Falcon Heavy has the advantage over the new Vulcan rocket because it has been flown since 2018, but Vulcan just flies once in January after a four-year delay, leading to ULA being fined in May. Meanwhile, the Space Force tends to require the new rocket to complete launches successfully before certifying it to fly the NSSL missions. ULA says it wants to launch two NSSL missions, designated USSF-106 and USSF-87, before the end of the year. Bruno did not estimate how long he thought certification would take, but believed it could be done in time to allow ULA to perform the two Space Force missions. That's because the Space Force has had time to review the data from the CERT-1 launch in January, and preparations are being done in advance of CERT-2. ULA will deliver data and analysis from CERT-2 to the Space Force, to allow it to quickly compare actual with expected performance. It will turn pretty quickly, in plenty of time to fly two more times this year, Bruno said. Both stages of the Vulcan rocket for CERT-2 arrived at the launch site. Cape Canaveral on June 23rd to begin launch preparations. Hardware for the two Space Force missions will arrive at the Cape in August, and right after that, Bruno said. ULA also received all six B-4 engines that will power Vulcan's first stage from Blue Origin for the launch this year. Dave Limp, chief executive of Blue Origin, has personal assurances that the company will be able to meet ULA's needs for B-4 engines, while also producing a version of the engine for its own New Glenn rocket. I have a great deal more confidence in Blue's ability to meet our needs, ULA's CEO said, compared to many months ago or a year ago. A year ago that wasn't the case, Bruno said, noting his company had a big concern about securing the engines ULA needed. That was back when Blue Origin had a B-4 engine explode during acceptance testing, an engine that was intended for the CERT-2 launch. The timely deliveries of the B-4 engines become even more important since 2025 onward. The company has sold roughly 70 Vulcan rockets to date for missions with the Space Force, Amazon, and Sierra Space. To meet this demand, Bruno expects ULA to make 20 launches, a ratio of 50 and 50 of Atlas V and Vulcan. In 2026, the Vulcan launch cadence will be rapidly ramped up with the goal of two flights per month in 2026. The 20th century marked NASA's golden but regrettable era when the ideas for reusable space planes ended in failure. So, the arrival of Sierra Space's Dream Chaser was widely anticipated to create an interesting renaissance. To turn the dream into reality, NASA has sponsored hundreds of millions of dollars for this ambitious project. However, this may be a waste for the national agency. Given that Sierra Space seems to repeat the predecessor's mistake, Dream Chaser's design is derived from NASA's HL-20 personnel launch system. HL means horizontal landing. The system was a NASA space plane concept for crewed orbital missions studied by NASA's Langley Research Center around 1990. It was envisaged as a lifting body re-entry vehicle similar to the space plane design of the Soviet BOR-4. Its stated goals were to achieve low operational costs, improved flight safety, and a possibility of landing on conventional runways. The PLS concept space plane was designed as a complement to the space shuttle and was considered an addition to the crewed launch capability of the United States. Unfortunately, it was never approved for development, and thus, 
Sierra Space leveraged this opportunity with the goal of bringing NASA's exciting idea from the dead. Like PLS Dream Chaser would be a small, compact vehicle due to removing large payload carrying requirements from personnel delivery missions. PLS has an overall length of about 8.8 .8 meters and a wingspan of 7.2 meters, while these numbers for Dream are 9 meters and 7 meters, 4.5 meters with folded wings, respectively. It can be said that Dream Chaser's dimensions are within inches of that of the HL-20. The Mini Shuttle has imitated PLS in terms of reusability features, as well as subsystem simplification and an aircraft approach on ground and flight operations. This can also greatly lower the costs of operating Dream. However, Dream Chaser isn't just the fruit of 20th century research, and 21st century scientists are looking to reinvent the wheel. As a result, we now have a vehicle that is touted as highly versatile and highly functional. The U.S. government agencies have shown interest in space vehicles to supplement traditional air, land, and surface transportation modes. The Dream Chaser will also support non-combat activities like humanitarian relief operations and medical missions. With the addition of a robotic arm, the Dream Chaser has the potential to boost satellites to a higher orbit or pull them out of orbit and potentially make repairs. The outstanding potential of this mini-shuttle vehicle attracted NASA a lot. Since 2010, the total funds that Sierra received from NASA, as far as I know, have gone up to $312.5 million. Not to mention, the company has also won commercial contracts with other firms, ULA for example. However, contrary to expectations, what Sierra did disappointed NASA and even its other partners. Although completed some NASA's tasks on time and within budget so far, Dream Chaser has not yet come online. The first space plane named Tenacity is slated to provide a minimum of seven cargo missions to the ISS and is considered the perfect alternative for Boeing's troubling Starliner. Its first ISS mission was originally scheduled for 2021, but significant delays have pushed the Starliner program further away from this plan. Everything was kicked off in early 2021 when the ongoing coronavirus pandemic pushed back the anticipated flight date to 2022. The delays during this time came from supplier shutdowns due to COVID-19 outbreaks. Technical challenges not related to the pandemic also caused problems. As of May 2022, it was announced by the deputy manager of ISS Dana Wagel that the mission was rescheduled for February 2023. Fast forward to early 2023, when we could have witnessed the second Vulcan Centaur flight carrying the first cargo Dream Chaser to the ISSA, surprising news came. NASA updated its internal schedule to show that Sierra Space's Dream Chaser spacecraft will now berth on the ISS no earlier than December 17, 2023. This is a significant change from the previous intention in August of the same year on board ULA's new Vulcan rocket. This unexpected incident caused concern for NASA, as it means that beginning that summer, the U.S. segment of the space station will be reliant on the Falcon 9 rocket alone for cargo supply missions. The mission was then delayed further to June 2024. However, in May 2024, the company just transported its very first prototype to the Space Systems Processing Facility at NASA Kennedy, highlighting another launch attempt in the fourth quarter of this year. These delays make many people doubt whether Dream Chaser is capable of becoming a second Starliner. So what do you think about this possibility? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, if you find this useful, please give us a share, like, and subscribe. Your support will be a huge motivation for us to release more quality videos in the future. And now let's come back. It is not difficult to imagine how all those postponements had major consequences. The most recent typical example is the case of ULA's Vulcan Centaur rocket. As you might know, ULA's new rocket needs at least two test flights to be certified by the Pentagon and later begin launching lucrative missions for the military. The company also had confidence in Dream Chaser's reliability when choosing it as the payload for its second mission. Nevertheless, the big problem in this case, Dream Chaser's latency increase, has impacted terribly on the launch of the highly anticipated Vulcan rocket. The company was supposed to start doing so two years ago and has come under significant pressure from Space Force officials to deliver for a while. The U.S. military is United Launch Alliance's most important customer. During the same time, the business operating of the company has also fallen off gradually, forcing its parent companies Boeing and Lockheed to sell it. 
The situation got worse in May this year after a long time of waiting. The U.S. Air Force imposed financial penalties on the company over delays in two military satellite launches this year. Although they did not disclose the amount of the postponement fees, we know that this fine is enough to deal a severe blow to an already dire situation. It's safe to say that the Louisville-based company should partly take responsibility for creating this mess. Since being publicly announced on September 20, 2004, the Dream Chaser project has taken Sierra 20 years or even more to develop a tiny space plane. In terms of time, it deserves to be left behind the Dust vs. SpaceX Dragon, its companion in NASA's commercial crew development program. In much less time, specifically 16 years, SpaceX not only creates and puts into practice the safest vehicle ever built, but also evolves it to adapt to the urgent demands of the new space era. The period is measured from 2004 when Dragon version 1 program was kicked off to 2020 when crewed version 2 successfully completed its first crewed orbital space flight. This large gap may be due to differences in production principles between the two companies. SpaceX is notorious for the rapid iterative development approach that has been the basis for all of SpaceX's major innovative innovations, including Starship, Falcon, Dragon, and Starlink. This methodology allows for rapid prototyping, real-world testing, and quick iterations, making it easier to identify flaws and implement improvements. In the case of Dragon spacecraft in its wild days, for example, the vehicle also experienced all kinds of testing like Dream Chaser's tenacity. But SpaceX did it by launching the whole thing and then they saw what breaks and then fixed what needs to be fixed. That is nearly the opposite of what Sierra Space is doing, meaning doing the full tests on the ground in advance, ensuring everything is perfect, and then praying for the first launch. In conclusion, for the current status of Dream Chaser, in my opinion, the spacecraft should serve as support for the SpaceX Dragon mission, at least in the near term. This offers NASA two alternatives that they usually dream about to ensure a secure means to achieve orbit in the context that there are going to be many space stations to service. Therefore, it could avoid repeating mistakes in the past when the shuttle failed, NASA was grounded and had no backup plan. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time